Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here for another power review. This is episode 10, the season finale of Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. Really, really, really good season. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say final episode was a <laughs> it was just okay it was just okay um the entire season for me has been much much better although we had some much needed conversations in this last episode there are definitely some good moments in this last episode it just kind of left us hanging a little bit but we did get some bodies, so let's get to it, you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you are new to my channel and you have not subscribed yet, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. Hit that subscription bell. If you wanna catch up with all my uploads, hit the notification bell right next to it. If you're interested in um, participating in engagement, uh, give me a thumbs up on um, on the like button uh, down below as well as t let's talk about it in the comments how did you guys feel about this this season finale um, were you like me looking for more uh, were you like me um, and you've just discussed it and talked about it to infinity and beyond and gone over it and over it and over it in your head so much that um, you know, you were destined to be let down. <laughs> That's how I feel. I feel like maybe I over talked all of the possible scenarios that could happen. And that led me to being ultimately let down, right? Like, was this a really, really good season finale? And I just had my anticipation and my expectations set so high that um that's the reason why it fell short or did it just jump the shark on episode 10 you guys tell me what you think about that put that down below listen let's get into it we're gonna take um all of our characters down um to rock but we're gonna sort of um back our way into the rock uh piece of this review um, first of all, let's just be clear off the rip that um, there was a lot of conversation about Sam and what was going to happen with Sam and who was going to do what to Sam. We find where this episode opens up with 50 Cent's doing the narration about um, crack rock and drug addiction and just how it drives you so on and so forth. There's absolutely no one that I know of that has not been touched by um, the crack epidemic, you know what I mean? Um, so I could really understand and really feel where 50 cents in the narration was coming from. And it, you know, it was so solemn. Um, we kind of knew that it was going to be the end for Sam in this moment. Basically he's in a highfalutin crack house and they call it highfalutin because it actually has heat in it as opposed to all the other crack outs crack houses which are just open windows and cool breezes all day right and um, Marvin has found him and he told him hey listen I told you to get ghost and you did not do that and and Sam was like I know I know I know man I'm still going I'm 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 planning I'm I have I really considered I was just mulling over getting ghosts <laughs> And Marvin was like, ah, unfortunately, that ship is sailed for you. I gave you the opportunity. You didn't take the opportunity. So I'm here to do what I said I thought, I, what I said I was going to do, right? What I, what I was being forced to do, right? Like, I have no choice. And Sam is like, you know what? I understand. Let me just get one more hit of this rock, right? And earlier on, we hear this conversation from another crackhead to Burke about Sam, about how he came back with a pocket full of money and he wasn't going to share with anybody. He had a big old wad. Well, she gave him money too, but it certainly wasn't a big old wad. 
And so Sam did exactly what I said he was going to do. Um, someone asked me in my comments uh, last week what I thought, why I thought Sam got off the bus. I was like, he's going to get high high. He's going to get high, 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 high. Now, I wasn't sure who was going to kill Sam. I wasn't sure if the crack was going to kill Sam. But I knew one thing for sure, that that money was calling after him to go buy some rocks. Right? It's just the nature of the beast. That's why I said Marvin didn't do him any favors. He would have, it would have, as morbid as it is, it would have been a bigger favor to pull a bullet through his eyes that would have been the favor but giving him money giving him money you set him up for the slow wind down right like so anyway sam takes his last little hit and uh he says you know i used to be an accountant down downtown in the business district and and everybody came to me and they trusted me he said but once you hit this rock baby you never go back you can never really recover once you stumbled and fall in fell in this way now we know that that is not true we know that that is not true but it was a very poignant moment um, between Sam and Marvin and Marvin was in tears Marvin was upset about it believe it or not there are some very lovable crackheads out there um, and so Marvin pulls the trigger puts two to Sam's chest and just like that Sam is gone it was hard for Marvin again we're seeing these changes in Marvin and I want to see more I do I want to see more from Marvin like I just I feel like Marvin's going to be um ultimately the winner in 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 this in this franchise you know what I mean like he he ultimately could be the one that comes up on top um, also, I don't know if Marvin was crying because he used to be an addict. I don't know what his drug of choice was, but um, he also used to be an addict. And so maybe some of Sam's words was falling on him. Maybe he was feeling like, you know, there but by the grace of God go I, you know, I don't know. But it was a good and moving moment. Now, um. Let's go on and talk about Juke, right? Because Juke, um, the Juke character, Laverne, if you will, was kind of neatened up and rolled up into a nice little bundle for us in this last episode. Um, there was some schools of thought that Juke would get a body. Um, and there, I know I personally thought that Juke would, something would happen and Juke would go away. And then the next time we would see the Juke character would be either at the end of episode three or in, I mean, um, season three or in season four. And, um, I was feeling really ambitious about that thought process because one season three is being filmed right now. Okay. They're filming Kanan, um, season three right now. And two, I thought that would be a great way for the character to go away, mature, come back, and maybe let's see if this is the juke that we know from the Power series, right? Like everybody's anticipating uh, when that change will happen, when that turn will happen, and when will she become that juke, right? Okay, so we see a uh, juke roll up on Corey, and y'all know that juke, what juke does better than anything else outside of um, being a vault right like keeping her mouth closed like no snitching um the other thing that she does very very well is surveillance juke is an excellent 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 surveyor right she uh you won't see juke coming and corey leaves um somewhere and he walks right past juke right past her on sitting on a stoop on a brownstone stoop and so she uh, gets up stealthily and walks right behind him. She's matching his steps, but she's behind him. And then all of a sudden she pushes him right in the back. And he is like, oh, <laughs> I know all this inside of his palms and stuff <laughs> was all scraped up. <laughs> no sooner he gets up and he's like, what the deuce? Uh, Juke comes down hard across the face. Right? And he was like, what? I'm talking about busting, busting, mouth bleeding. He was like, what the heck is wrong with you? You're crazy. He was like, you, you, my mom and the church set me up with this bull crap, you know, and I don't appreciate it. And he's just like, 
Um, your mom put me up to it. She wanted to know if you was in the dudes or not. And I told her, I told her that, 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 that B is a, a, a D word is just awful. It's awful. Racial slurs, child, uh, uh, um, feminine slurs, um, um, and, uh, LGBTQIA slurs, just bloop, 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 right? <laughs> and she hit him again. <laughs> okay. Man, so then he was like, you know, by this time he's mad. It's like getting slapped repeatedly. Like you kind of explode. And he just, you know, swings and she leans back. And baby, when I tell you it take more energy to swing and miss, where he missed, she called him again. Clack, clack. Okay. And this time when he went down, she caught him in the belly. Boom, boom, boom. One to the mouth and three to the body, baby. And he fell down coughing and <laughs> you're crazy and she was like oh i got you crazy and then she started booting him up she had her tims on she just started booting him up in the belly like across the ribs like cracking them ribs it's cracking them and cracking them you know and just like like a little skip a little hop in the air and just like cow, 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 with the boot right like she was really enjoying herself <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mm -mm -mm. it was a good juke moment Please roll up on it and pull her off of him. And he was like, she snuck me from behind and sucker punched me. She was like, I walked right up to your face. Really juke you did. And you kind of pushed him down. And then when he turned around, you walloped him. <laughs> Either way, he wasn't ready. He wouldn't have been ready with his eyes open. Because he never did think that juke was was going, uh, uh, was able, had the ability to molly whop him. But molly whop him, she did, and then she berated him while they was arresting her. She was like, nah, we just friends. We just old friends. We just kicking it. <laughs> she snuck up on me and sugar punched me. He said, she said, you a liar, little snitch, but with a B. And she said, um, uh, uh, you, you, your eyes was wide open. He, she said, we're just having fun. We old friends. That's my boy. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, I tell you, he was fit to be tired. He done crawled to the street and spitting his blood down the drain. I said, listen, listen, this is a story you're going to have to really, really reinvent. You're not going to be able to tell this story as is, Corey. You're just not, okay? You look bad, all right? I was glad she did it. I was glad she did it. That's the closer that she needed. She whooped him good. We see where uh, after she got arrested, she sat and hold him for a little while. And thanks to Burke, she gets out. Now, she don't know it's Burke that gets her out. She's uh, leaving the police station and walking down the street. And Burke uh, runs up behind her and say, hey, Laverne, Laverne, Laverne. And she was like, oh, of course it's you. You're the one that got me out. And Laverne was like, uh, you're welcome. And she was like, yeah, uh-huh. She said, um, I want to know. Either she asked her who Kanan's daddy was or asked her if Detective Howard was Kanan's daddy. And Juke was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Um, what's the guy name that's supposed to be his daddy? I forget. Uh, Iron. I forget. I forget the man name that's supposed to be his daddy. Running shoot. No, that's a basketball court. Um, D Mac. No, that's the guy that make food on YouTube. <sighs> Ironclad. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all know the man that's supposed to be his daddy. You see how fast we done forgot him? Because we know Detective Howard is his daddy. What's his name? Offshoot? I don't know. Anyway, it's something like that, child. I don't know why they don't call the man real name. I really don't. He's supposed to be somebody bona fide daddy. And and uh, um, y'all keep calling him Snapshot or whatever his name is. You get what I'm saying? Whatever his nickname is. It's so weird that he never calls his father by his by his given name. It's just odd. No one refers to this guy that he thinks is his real dad. Crapshoot. I can't think of it. Um, by his bona fide name. They call him by his nickname. And so Laverne was like, what are you talking about? Like, I just, 
you're supposed to be my guardian angel. One cop is supposed to be my guardian angel, which is hilarious. And the other one's supposed to be my cousin's father. She was like, up here, Bert, up here, you need some tightening. Your screws is loose up here, okay? That's all I'm saying. And she said, just tell me what I want to know. Laverne, Laverne was like, I don't, I don't, first of all, number one, I don't snitch. Everybody know that about me. Number two, it's nothing to tell you. But I will tell you this, you need to guard yourself carefully, you know what I'm saying, closely, because there's people out here running with you that you think is your friend, they ain't your friend, okay? They not your friend at all, and they want you to stop this, right? They don't have no problem putting the kibosh on you. I was like, now nah, you did do her solid. You did do her solid. Laverne say I do owe you a favor. Because you have been there for me when I called for you. All I can do is tell you to watch your back. Keep your eyes open. Keep your head on a swivel. Okay? All the glitters ain't gold. Okay? <laughs> all right? That's all I can tell you. And thanks for getting me out. You know, very respectful. Very respectful. We see where Nicole uh, later on meets where... Um, I'm sorry. Where... Um, Juke meets with Nicole's dad and you know he's still trying to talk her into you know telling what happened to her and Laverne and this is I know you scared and and I'm gonna be here with you and I'm gonna stand by you and we can get justice for Nicole and she just told him she said listen the, I, I can't I'm not a fan of cops but I can't lie on this cop because she didn't have nothing to do with Nicole dying it was it was my fault and Nicole's fault basically I had drugs in my bag. Nicole went in my bag, took those drugs, and she smoked them. And she died. Okay? Duke got them drugs from my bag. And he was like, no, no, you, you're lying. You're lying because you're scared. You're afraid of what the police will do to you. And I understand I can protect you. And she was like, I, I don't even like hearing myself say it. So I know you don't like hearing it. But it's the truth. The truth of the matter is... Nicole took them drugs out of my bag, and she smoked them, and she died. I'm so sorry. And she got up and she left. I was like, ooh, Duke. Duke is so much more mature than Kanan. And, of course, she's a girl, so we, it's to be expected. But just she's so much more centered. Do you know what I'm saying? She's so much more centered. And she's very unapologetic about her character as a whole. And I love that about her, right? So um, then we see where um, Duke uh, goes home. Everything is said and done. She She's kind of, you know, tied up loose ends with Corey and tied up loose ends with, with um, Nicole's father, right? And just had an opportunity to process everything it was he wanted her to do and what she was and was not willing to do. She's processed all of that, right? And... And now she back home. Now she ready. Remember when she told Marvin she wasn't ready right then to discuss it and that she couldn't talk about it right then? I think she's ready now. I think she's ready not only to live back in that house with him, but she's ready to give him a chance, you know, to show her or to disappoint her like everybody else has. But it's Marvin's opportunity okay, it's Marvin's opportunity. She is sick and tired of that lumpy bed over there at at Rocks, which ironically was Marvin's bed. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if the house that, that Rock is staying in is their family home or what. But he said that used to be his bed. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about Marvin and uh, Jute's conversation when she came home when we talk about Marvin. Okay, um, and that's basically Jute. That that was Juke for this for this season finale. And so we kind of wrap her up in a nice little bow. Um, she's still in New York. We uh, she's building a relationship with her dad. We don't know just how uh, much longer we're going to have the Juke character in this form. So I say let's just enjoy it as long as we can, you guys. OK, so listen, <clears throat> let's talk about Lou. Oh, <sighs> you know, Lou is back putting in that work. We get to see him the first part of this episode where 
he is in the car with two other dudes and they run down on the Italians. But once again, they're a terrible shot. Like these guys were standing up against a brick wall. It's absolute it's smoking and, and drinking. It was no reason they shouldn't have all been mowed down, except you guys can't turn a corner without um, screeching. Your headlights are on. <laughs> all y'all got masks on, but you're supposed to start from the from the top of the corner and and spray it all the way through. Okay, so you nip everybody in the bud, right? Um, he hits like two. It's like six people standing out there. He hits like two. Which two we don't know, but it should have been a lot more bodies uh, on the ground, uh, Lou. Especially since this was a drive-by hit for you, and the dudes is all standing outside smoking and drinking. Like, hey, here we are against a brick wall. The battle is on. This is Lou's attempt to prove himself to rock. OK, he's he, he knows his family's going to war with Italians and he's trying to prove that he's all in. I mean, just on the surface, because he's not really all in. He really doesn't want to go to war with the with the uh, Italians. And, and, and granted, Rock does make it seem easy. But Lou is acutely aware of how quickly a person can get killed out here. I think that's his issue. He don't want to end up dead before he does something really, really successful and legitimate with his life. And I don't blame him. Listen, all this going on and he got mail, right? Ziza come into the studio. She done made a beat. Now she also wraps up the Cartier piece for us and lets us know she's not in cahoots with Cartier. You know, Cartier was just somebody that was trying to put her on. You know, her parents don't want her to be that back down in the studio because he got shot. But she said, ain't nobody getting shot over music. I, oh, oh, I beg to differ. But, uh, okay. She said, you know, he he dealt with a lot of people in a lot of bad situations. He, you know, that's probably why he got killed. So we learned in this moment that some of our theories about Ziza being in cahoots with Cartier is not necessarily the case, right? I think because they did such a good job of weaving the stories of giving us characters and 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 giving us different energies within the scenes of the characters a lot of it was our perception a lot of it was our imagination and what i really loved about it was all of our harebrained ideas and schemes and theories could all have been true could all have been true not all at the same time you know what i mean but yeah, it, Cartier could have been running a harem of hoes who were also um, grifters, you know what I'm saying? Con women, right? You know, his, his, his assault team could have been women and not men, right? That was possible. That was possible. Um, it turns out Ziza is just selfish, young, <laughs> self-serving. You know what I'm saying? All about her own agenda. Turns out that's those are the real facts. But our theories could have been true. They could have all been true, right? So, um, yeah, I thought that was really, really funny. So she clears it up for him. And at the same time, Lou is getting mail. So uh, he listens to the beat. It's a really, really good beat. It kind of reminds me of uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, Mary J. Blood. Oh no, that's wrong. But anyway, it's, I don't know if it's off the four one one app. But anyway, it was it was that Mary J. Blige beat. Y'all know what it is. Y'all put it down below. I was almost started singing it, but I know it's gonna be three or four different songs in one song. <laughs> oh my gosh! If I could hear that beat over and over again, I would start singing the Mary J. Blige song. But it was it was it was a little bit of that beat in there, right? Y'all tell me if y'all know what I'm talking about and put it down below. Anywho, um, it's a good beat. And he was like, get in there in the studio. Now he's still looking at these papers that he ain't got from the bank. Later on, he go to the bank. And when he get in, in the bank, he uh, the guy was like, we never have people come in here and question us about having too much money in the bank. He was like, the, the amount is not the issue. I'm not disputing the amount. I want to know where this money came from. Come to find out, Crown made a deal with Rock. Okay, if something were to happen to him that, uh, that, uh, she would purchase his shares 
she's already got a piece of, of the puzzle, right? Because she been giving Lou money, all right? And uh, his shares would be sold to Rock and the proceeds forwarded to his mama. And then Rock would have Crown's shares of Bulletproof Records, right? So uh, remember, Cartier wanted a piece. Now Cartier is gone, so I don't know if that was if that was legal and binding because what Crown and Rock did was legally binding, notarized, certified, signatures, all of these things. Okay, and so um, Rock owns a piece of Bulletproof Records thanks to her relationship with Crown. Now, she doesn't tell Lou this. He finds out that it's Raquel Thomas. And he is pissed off. I'm talking about mad, mad, mad. So, we see where uh, he then goes to see Rock. And he was like, hey, why didn't you tell me you bought Crown shares? Like, why didn't you tell me you was in, 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 in with... Um, bulletproof record she was like i own his shares and i own yours too like, what are you talking about i've always owned your shares you owe me you will always owe me and he was like rock I, listen she was like why do we have to keep having this conversation she I was already upset she was upset because she really wanted this this new house that she bought to be something that everybody participated in and everybody just gathered at her house and and she cooked and and they all sat around the table and acted like a regular normal american family and instead caning over there sleeping on on a famous uh roach infested couch Marvin got his own house, Duke leaving. She ain't going to the new house. She back over there at her daddy's house. And you don't want to be a part of this family at all. You know what I'm saying? And she is pissed off. She don't want to talk about it. Things aren't going as planned. She's got these 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 things that's happening in her business. You know what I'm saying? These major L's that she's taking. She is she is has a short fuse and he, he come talking about this money and she belittles him and she berates him. Baby, when I tell you it, it, it the only thing that was scary for me was the fact that he was standing there but he wasn't crying. That he had this look on his face like like he could have snapped her neck I mean he was in fury he was so upset and I mean he was oh. let me tell you what she said she said everything you have is mine everything you ever got you got it from me right I keep trying to put y'all in the zone I don't understand where you gonna go Lou you keep trying to leave but where you gonna go you ain't got nowhere to go you ain't got nowhere to go. So let me say it for you plainly. Let me just make it clear for you. And she walks up to him and grabs his face, huh? Each side of his face and gets right in it. And she say, I own you, ninja. I own you. Get that through your head. Walks off. And he just standing there. He just standing there. Well, I tell you, this, these, they, these are the things. When they say this right here get you in trouble. These, this right here will get you in trouble. These are the things that'll make a, 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 a sane man snap. You get what I'm saying? Like, you just don't do it. You just don't do it. You don't do this in this way like this. Just don't do it. Because you will end up with your neck snap. Cat, cat, cat. Okay? Before you know it. And it ain't like he gonna hide your body. He might sit there with it if you're breaking hard enough. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And Lou decides he going to quit. He is going to quit. He going to take all his stuff. She want this record label. She can have this record label. I'm out. Basically. And, and, and Ziza is like, Lou, wait a minute. But my song. But my song. And what about? And he was like, I'm out. I'm out. She can have this. What's going on? What else? My sister. Okay. He doesn't get a chance to move all the way because... It's about to pop off, right? Let's go on and talk about um, Burke. Burke, like I said, she looks for Sam. And after them crackheads wore her out in that one crack house, they sent her over there to the other crack house. <laughs> she really got some balls as a, as a, as a, as a, um, 
white lily supporter. You know what I'm saying? The mayonnaise uh, marauders. She she really got some nerve walking up in a crack house. You know what I'm saying? And she got her hand on a gun. I was like, girl, you think you can move fast enough for all them zombies? You'll be up under a pile of zombies in a matter of seconds, ma'am. Anyway, she goes over to the new spot. And um, they I don't know why they had so many official police people there. Like ambulances and all of this stuff. And and. You don't need nothing but the corner. You don't need nothing but the corner. Right? It's a crackhead. Y'all just, you know, sweep them up <laughs> like you do bugs and throw them in the trash. You know what I mean? Like, it was weird. Like, it was a full-on police investigation. And it was it was crackhead Sam in a crack house dead. They gathered around. Like, they sweeping up and taking... Maybe because he was shot. Maybe because he was shot and it wasn't like an OD or anything. But we don't do all bodies this way, do we? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, um, she's standing there looking, and uh, people, somebody was saying, oh, it, it looks like an execution. Maybe she was telling Howard it looked like an execution. He was like, how you figure? He a crackhead. They do crackhead behaviors. They, they shoot each other. They kill each other. Like, it's a whole bunch of stuff, you know. And it's true because she heard... The other crackheads say that, that Sam had a wad full of money. You know what I'm saying? You going to get killed for that alone. Y'all know that I said that in my review last week. All that money, that will get you killed just as fast as the cracker kill you, right? People will cut your throat for a few dollars. So, um, uh, and, and, and she tells how her whole scenario, what she think went down. He was about to testify. He was like, he's already testified. He was about to be a witness. He's already been a witness. Well, he was about to tell what he saw that night. He had some new information about what he saw that night you were shot. And 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 Howard had a very valid point. He is a crackhead. He'll tell you all kinds of stuff to get out of jail. Like, what? He finally asked her, where, where are you going with this? Why? Do you seriously think this had anything to do with me? She's like, I don't know. Do you? what do you think and he was like where what's happening why are you doing this why are you going through all this and she was like i'm gonna get to the bottom of this basically you have no answer why are you like a dog with a bone with this and i'm just like don't you have anything else to do like there are no other assignments on your desk you're just allowed to run around the city harassing minors and chasing after uh, minors and and, 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 and and opening your own investigation. Like, what else are you working on? This is what IA could be doing. Oh, it just gets on my nerves. Mm, mm, mm. Um, like I said, uh, she goes... And she talks to her girlfriend and she tells her girlfriend, anything happens to me, look, listen, you, you, this is, Howard is probably guilty. And her, and her girlfriend's like, where'd you get this from? And she was like, this minor teenager high schooler told you that? And she was like, oh no, she's got good information. I'm just telling you. I was like, please, please, please let something happen to her right away. Please let her something happen to her in this episode. Um... Burke also rolled up on Canaan. Okay, but we're going to talk about that when we get to Canaan. Um, let's talk about <laughs> Let's talk about uh Canaan. Then we're going to talk about Marvin. Let's talk about Canaan. Okay, so um Canaan is uh famous is Canaan's new old lady. <laughs> famous say you going to stay here, man. You going to have to chip in. These bills is real. What bills? You in one room. You in one room. He on the sofa and you on a, a filthy mattress on the floor. What are your bills? It's 1990 what? Three, four, five? What are your bills? Exactly. Exactly. Your power got to be what? Maybe $60? Maybe $60? You ain't got but one TV? Is your water in your rent? Your rent can't be no more than four fifty five, honey. I don't know. Y'all in New York, so it's kind of high. But still. He trying to tell Kanan, you're going to have to find some work. We're going to have to get these bill pays. I got these kids I got to take care of. Like, they're like an old married couple. Except they're sharing a joint. And uh, he was like, well, what you think about going back to the streets? And Famous was like, to do what? Sell ours? I was like, 
What did you accomplish when you went over there and blood, uh, brutally killed Freddy? Anything? Anything? Nothing. You didn't even check the pockets. You didn't even check the po man's pockets. Like, what an idiot. What a maroon. But everybody got a lot to worry about in this episode but Famous. Famous ain't even blinking. We don't even know what Famous did with that gun. Did he take the gun back to Corinne's mama? We have no idea. But you worried about your bills and getting your bills paid. Canaan say, I'm going to get some work. Well, how you going to get work? That last little bit of work you had before, they ain't going to cut it. That's not going to pay no bills. I need you to take care of me. Keep me in the lap of luxury into which I have grown accustomed. Okay? That's what I need you to do. All right? And, and Canaan was like, don't worry about it, baby. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to get some more work. That's your mom, them your mama drugs. Aren't you worried about your mama? Them my drugs. What's my mama's is mine. Okay? It's my work. I was like, oh, somebody's working on getting their face slap mm -hmm. and their butt beat. Okay? Rock finna send you to cut her a switch, Canaan. You don't even know it yet, but it's fine. Okay, so we see where um, he psychs himself up, like I said, to believe that what's rocks is his. <laughs> it's the worst. We see where uh, he goes to the, to the drug house and he steals more drugs. Instead of one bag now, he takes two. And, and Marvin watches the whole thing go down. He's not sneaking. He's not. He confronts him. He tells him, he says, hey, you're, that's not yours. He says, yeah, I'm getting some work. He says, that's not yours. That's stealing. He says, that's my own stuff. How am I going to steal my own stuff? And he tells him, he says, you've been stealing a lot lately, right? Not just this work, but some more work. And, and, and we've become, we've come up a little light on money. How do you explain that? And he was like, how I can't steal my own stuff. He says, I'm going to have to tell your mama. I'm going to have to dime you out to your mother. Okay. And Canaan was like, I don't give a a duck what you tell my mama I don't give a duck what my mama think and he go to walk out and the man standing at the door like uh unless Marvin say you can leave with them stolen drugs you cannot sir and then Canaan you know how he do look at Marvin and Marvin's let him through goes on out the door and him and him and uh famous down there on the corner famous is the go get boy and he's the he's the he's the money man he collects the money and tell famous how many how many bags he need you know how many bloop 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 famous goes and get it out of trash can and brings it and get a guy a dap and you know what i'm saying they work in this corner oh famous say i thought your mother didn't want you work in the corner, didn't want nobody to work in the corner. He was like, this ain't my mother's thing, this my thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a duck what my mother want, what my mother think. And and um, Famous is like, oh, okay. Burke pulling down the street and she see Kanan standing on the street corner. And she is like, mother ducker, this ninja is right out here in public. Pulls the Yui, Famous grabs the dope, runs back down the alleyway. One thing you did smart this season. Just one. She hems Kanan up against the wall, hems Kanan up against the car, puts him in the car and takes him to the park where he shot uh, uh, Malcolm Howard and says, uh, she takes a cuff off of him and she says, this is where, this is where you shot him. And Kanan was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like, this is where you shot Malcolm. He was like, I'm confused as to what you're talking about. And she was like, you shot Malcolm, your father, in the chest. It's because he's your father and somebody was going to find out about being your father, him being your father. And he was like, again, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and she was like, okay, okay, okay. Is this because he was your, your mama was a snitch? And then Kanan was like, yo, you're going too far. You're going too far, okay? You see, if anybody would say something like that about my mother, obviously don't know that they're going too far. And um, he was like, I don't even know why I'm talking to you like this. I don't even understand. I don't have to talk to you. You just want to get me all tied up and get me to admit to something I didn't do. I don't have to talk to you anymore. 
and she turns him around, spins him around and pushes him up against the basketball court gate and, and she's going to arrest him. He was like, what? Yo, are you serious? And she was like, you tell me what I want to know. Or I'm taking you downtown for distribution of drugs. Where are the drugs? First of all, second of all, Kanan is a minor. You can't just question a minor right you're not we're not even in an official setting you're using that badge to 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 um not only put salt in public trust but you're using that badge to commit crimes <sighs> she's the worst she is the worst the worst and and i wish they had a road where sam you know what i'm saying choked her out <laughs> I wish they had a wrote, a wrote the scene where Sam leaned in and bit the nose off of her face. Like, I just cannot stand Bert. Um, so, you know, you know, he, he's, Kanan is frustrated and he, and he's, the, his back is against the wall and he, they're going to arrest me. And he turns around and pushes her hard to the ground. She, another one got them, got them inside the hand abrasions and, and, uh, and uh, he runns off. And she was like, I'll, I know where to find you, Kanan. Yeah, and bring a lawyer. Bring the chief. Bring your IA rep. Because you're not questioning me without a parent. Period. I don't care where you come to get me from either. So um, he runs immediately to Howard and tells Howard what happened. And Howard was like, so you just ran and pushed her down? <laughs> he was like, yeah, I mean. So... He told him, he said, this thing is getting out of hand. She's not going to stop until she gets what she wants. She doesn't know what she has. If she knows what she has, she wouldn't have stopped you in the first place. She just wants you to confirm what she thinks she already knows. We need to talk to your mom. Me, you, and your mama need to have a sit down. And we need to have a discussion. And we need to get this joker straight. We need to all get our story straight. And Kanan is looking like he done sucked on a sour lemon like... I was like, you better listen to your daddy. You best listen to your daddy. Okay. So, um, um, we see where, uh, um, at the end, we see where Howard and Kanan pull up to put, pull up to he and Rock's house at the end. The conversation is going to happen here at the end of the season finale. Not on the season finale, but the the impl it, the it it's implicated. You know what I'm saying? It's inferred that the conversation is going to happen. Now I don't know if this is going to be the same as that conversation that uh, Howard had when Kanan went inside his house, and we never heard that conversation. I don't know if it's going to be the same type of conversation, right? Because what are we doing here? What are we working on, right? Like, are they going to start season three and we're just not going to talk about this sit down? Are they going to start season three with this sit down? Are they going to refer to this sit down? Are we going to get a, a, a blow by blow playback of what this sit down was all about? Does a sit down ever happen? We don't know. Okay, so that basically is Kanan. Um, like I said, Marvin was very emotional about killing Sam. Um, he goes to Basie there and he finds... Uh, um, Kane and stealing and he it takes him aback a little bit. He doesn't really know what's going on between Kane and his mama, but he knows it's bad. And when he tells Rock after they after they um company meeting, he tells Rock that he called him stealing. And Rock asked how much and he and he told her and he said, I told him that I was gonna tell you and he said he didn't give a duck about what you think. And she was like, you know what, just to handle the problem at hand, I'll deal with Kane. Okay. Uh, the conversation between Marvin and Juke when he realizes that Juke is home, it is such a good moment. It's such a good moment. I've just really fallen in love with the Marvin character this season. He tells her, um, are you home for good? And she was like, yeah, you know, uh, um, he thought somebody was breaking in the house. She said, why would I break into my own home? All of these things are letting him know proceed. You know, these little conversations, they seem like slights. They seem like, you know, when he tells her about he used to sleep on the mattress, she said, well, maybe that's why you are his home. He was like, yeah, maybe why that may be why 
it seemed like she's doing back talk and she's taking jabs at him, but this is how they communicate with one another. Um, although I think he would like it to be a little bit more lovey dovey, cutesy ootsy. Um, this is what uh, Juke has to give him and he's willing to accept it. He said, Juke, we have to take care of each other. We're all we got. It's a good moment. It really is a good moment. Um, so, um, I love that Rock had several business meetings during this episode and she had Marvin rolling with her. I love in one of those meetings how he kind of peeped game and called it out and let Rock know, you know, this is what's happening. In another one of the meetings, he comes right alongside her and whispers in her ear and says, let's roll because I don't want you to, to um, say more than you need to say. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to go too far with the words. We see what's going on. Let's roll on. Mark is showing, I mean, uh, Marvin is showing leadership. And the reason I mention this is because um, Rock may be incapacitated for season, the first part of season three. Maybe Marvin is going to pinch hit, right? I know we've in the past thought of Marvin as a, as a dullard, but, you know, maybe things do change. Maybe things do change. We see where, um, you know, like I said, these are really, really good moments for Marvin. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, Rock. And then we're just going to wrap this whole thing up with Rock. Uh, Rock is shafting and getting shafted, right? What she did um, in this season, in the last two seasons, to Unique, to Scrap, uh, D-Wiz, and, and Lou, how she talked to them, you know what I'm saying? How she has in some small way here or there gave them the old shiv, heave hole, you know, smack down the, the setup, right? Now she's getting a taste of it. And even though it's not fair and it's not right and it's coming from Juliana, right? Like Juliana, Juliana's supposed to be a boss B now? Like we just going to... Forget the fact that she run a little a measly bodega. She It was her husband's bodega, and he was whipping her behind, and Rock killed him for her. And she acted like a scared rabbit when, when Unique came into the bodega and, and yanked her butt out of there. Now, all of a sudden, you talking, out, you talking real slick out your mouth, real bossy out your mouth, like you got something, and you just, you just got your cousin next to you. Really? Really, Juliana? Okay, I see who gonna be father for season three. You hold that thought, Juliana. You hold that thought. But for as much shafting uh, as Rock did to them, she getting shafted now. She is definitely getting shafted. We see um, where she meet up with Tremont and Abraham. Now, you know, she done got Abraham out of jail. And she done killed Cartier for Tremont. And told Tremont, I done took care of the business. Now, you you, you need to deliver it. Uh, we can ha I can have it to you by the end of the week. How many deliveries do you need? And he was like, ah, we're good on product. And she was like, what are you talking about good on product? Marvin sitting there eating a potato chip. He said, oh, we being cut out. They went around us. And so they looking at each other like, hmm. Now, remember, they saw them uh, uh, rock in the restaurant with Juliana and Joaquin. And so they went double back and went and met with Joaquin and Juliana in his restaurant. Apparently it's their restaurant. Okay. So, um, they don't went around rock and talk to Joaquin and rock said, you dealing with Joaquin, Joaquin. And he was like, listen, we Cartier was the middleman. We didn't need another middleman. What we wanted was to be on our own. It's, it's money out here. We want all the money for ourselves. And I was like, you low life snake. You low life snake. See, you think you slick. And the reason why you think you slick, because this a woman, right? And you feel like that this woman is one she didn't see you coming. Now, when she first met you, you was getting talked down to horribly. I mean, just absolutely um, um, usurped. Okay, dismissed and diminished. Hmm? When she saw you in the hotel, you had a whole black eye. Your mans and them don't even know how to conceal a gun. He riding in a car with guns in it and get pulled over. You don't have the wherewithal, the money, or the pool, the network to get your mans and them a lawyer. Rock, get him a lawyer. And this what you do? And you think you're going to survive and live from this? Like you the pedophilia? If you don't get your monkey dunk, 
this pissed me off. Now, I'm not saying rock didn't need to be shafted because what you put out, what you what you what you sow, you shall reap, right? What you plant, you gon' you gonna get back harvest time, right? So that that still remains the same, but still the nerve of Juliana and Tremont. Y'all need to pump y'all brakes because you're thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. She was so mad. She told Juliana, she said, listen, you, 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 you out of your weight class with this. And Juliana's like, hmm, because Joaquin said, I didn't make a deal with him. She did. Right. I pulled my money out of that bodega. You can't trust this helper. You can't trust this helper. I wouldn't send no money through that bodega and I wouldn't pull no, put no more money. I take all my money out of that bodega. And Juliana's just sitting there like, hmm, 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 hmm. And so she said, this is what you're doing. You, first of all, you acting out of your weight class. Okay. Um, uh, punching up it, 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 the power isn't in punching up. The power is being able to take every one of them punches that come down. And it, basically she was telling her they going to come down. And she also told, uh, uh, Trey mom, and she said, <laughs> oh my gosh, she said something about a penis, um, um, swinging D's or something like that. Anyway, um, oh no, she told him, she said, um, we're not done. You know, because Trayvon was like, we're done here. She's like, oh, no, we're not done. We are not done. <laughs> okay. Until I have, have booked you as hard as you booked me. And trust me, my meat is bigger. Okay. She said, I got a long, 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 and it can't go wrong. Okay. We had some good rock moments. We had some good poignant rock moments in this episode. Okay. So really, really good. All right. So. Um, so she leaves there, she goes to the house and she's pissed off the new house and, and, and it, things are not working out. Okay. She's upset. Lou shows up. She cusses him out and, and, and makes him feel like the dirt on the bottom of her shoe. She leaves there. She goes back home and she is chilling out at home. Now she has already made these runs on the Italians, right? Lou did it in the beginning of the episode. Um, uh, you know, and she's got she's gotten clearance from the guy in the fish store, uh, uh, just outside of Bankhead, Buckhead, whatever. She got clearance from him, uh, just like Sal did, that they can fight to the death as long as they don't bring it to his territory. As long as they don't involve him, he ain't got nothing to do with it. He ain't got nothing to do with it. Y'all can kill each other for all I care. Okay, just make sure I get my cut. And so, um, yeah, it's crazy. And so now, um, and she done met with Lou now. Like I said, she had a company meeting and she told him what's what. And, and um, this ain't no this ain't no major problem. This is just a speed bump, a lane change, that type of thing. Um, but it's all coming down on her. It's all coming down on her. You know what I'm saying? She even told Lou about Scrap. She told him that, that she it wasn't he wasn't the snitch. It was his mama that was the snitch. And that she has to live with that. Can you do that? Can you carry this ninja's body on your conscience? This it, it's a part of the job. All of these things are going through her head. She she there at home. When Kenya walk up to the door, okay, and when she opened the door and it's Kenya, she got her gun, but she was like, how you get to the door when my man's in them? And she look outside and her man's in them in the car, they dead. I'm like, how they dead? First of all, it, this, this episode was set in such dark lighting. There was a lot of shadowing, even when Jute was in jail. Um, it was some areas were lit, but there was, there was a lot of real of darkness and shadowing in this episode, right? Um, so no sooner than she asked, she see that the, the, her man's in them is dead. She tell Kenya to get down because the police are there. Kenya there to talk to her about the fact that Laverne assaulted. I thought I could talk to your mother and mother, mother to mother. Laverne assaulted a member of mine. And next thing you know, doo, 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 doo. she got bullets to the back. She done fell dead right there in Rock Foyer. Rock get to the back of the house and she looking like, where am I going to go? Where am I going to run? If you don't know where to go in your own home. That's a problem, Rob. But then she decides she's going to turn around. She's going to stand her ground. 
Okay, and they come in the door and she hit them. Boom, boom, boom. Rock is one of the few Thomases that can't actually shoot. Okay, guy comes in, they got automatic rifles. Cha, 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 cha. She gets shot in the shoulder. Now, she don't know that that over at, at the studio, Lou been hit. The Italians done went in the studio and, and shot the studio up. Lou haven't been hit. Lou's able to take them down, but not before they kill Ziza. She also don't know that Rock, that uh, Marvin's over at the Basie, okay? And it's full-on war at the Basie. I felt so bad for those people that still got apartments. I was like, I hope they all in, got the whole family in the bathtub. Like, it's semi-automatic weapons. It's a full-on gunfight. A lot of Rock's men get taken out. Rock, uh, Marvin gets hit. Seems like he get hit in the side of the stomach. Okay, he goes upstairs to the empty apartments and he's whispering, trying to get people to let him in. And finally, this man in the wheelchair lets him in. Okay, I think that was the man that he held the elevator for. He let him in there. Okay, man lets him in the apartment and then the Italians don't see him and they go back downstairs looking for him. We don't know if Marvin is alive. We don't know. This is the, the episode is ending. Okay, uh, Rock get hit in the shoulder. Okay, and she's laying there on the ground and she's just. <sighs> and the guy says, You should have stayed in your own lane. You, you should know your place. You knew you were out of your place. And she said, Whatever you gonna do, just do it. Do what you came here to do. Like, if I'm, I'm about to die, I'm about to die with my, with my hat on. I'm not finna die with my tail tucked between my legs. And he goes to cock the gun. You know, the, the villain always has to have a judgment speech, and which leaves enough time for someone else to come in and shoot your guts up. <laughs> and not in the fun way. Woo! Shot from behind. It's unique. Puts his hand down and lifts Rock up because his place been hit too, okay? His place has been hit too. And he lost Warrell in the gunfight with the Italians. A lot of men, but his boy, Warrell, he loses in the gunfight. So we lost Ziza. We lost Sam this episode. We lost Warrell this episode. We lost um, Kenya this episode. And if I'm missing anybody, y'all put it down below. He, he, uh, he went to meet with Rock. Unique went to meet with Rock just to assess what was going on. And she offered him a position as a premier. And he was like, I, I already work for you. I don't need to continue to work for you. And I'm not, I'm not a company man like that. And she was like, well, this is, we're going global. We're going worldwide and give you a chance to get in on the ground floor. And he asked her, do you think there will ever have been a chance for you and I? She seemed like she might be a little bit older than Unique, but I could be wrong. But at the same time, seeing her make these moves and working with her in this capacity, I don't know if he just feeling some type of way or what. But she was like, nah, 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 son. <laughs> we don't mix business with pleasure. But now in this moment where they both have lost somebody, they both have lost something. They're in this really highly charged um, it, it, uh, environment where all of these horrible things have happened we never know we never know she walks outside with her and unique and you know his body's laying around and the police is on their way and at the same time uh howard is pulling up with canaan and and basically uh we hear uh 50 cent narrating about the south side jamaica queens we all stick together and I guess this is why Unique came back to save Rock after his place was hit. He came to check on Rock and was able to save her. What did you guys think of this season finale? What did you guys think of this episode? What do you think season three is going to be like? Um, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Please put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I holla.